Everybody needs a windlass, right? Especially on a seagoing boat. But when you have a problem and it's not working, you have to start methodically searching the way through from the very origin of where the power's coming from to the windlass itself. But overlooking the obvious can cost you a whole lot of time. So first problem of the season, this is the anchor windlass. And it's not working. I'm hoping it's just the battery is flat and below voltage. So I've put the battery charger on, but I'm going to go and have a look at the windlass itself. I think we've got a bigger problem than just batteries. Sea line generally take a direct feed from the battery that services the bow thruster. And therefore what you have to do is climb underneath the bed unit and find where the circuit breaker is. I've traced underneath and found this. Everything looks to be intact and I've popped a multimeter on there and it's providing the right voltage. So the next place to have a look is in the anchor locker itself and have a look at the solenoid unit. Typically the solenoid was giving out the right voltage every time I checked it. Now I'd been informed that Sea line literally took the cables directly from the motor of the windlass and popped them straight on to the solenoid unit. I checked the connections, they were good, and I assumed that the cable was also good. More about that later, because the next thing I did was spent nearly six hours completely stripping the windlass down and also the motor. You may notice that I've got the uh, anchor tied off as well due to the fact that uh, what I don't want to do is undo something and then lose the anchor into the water. You might be able to hear some shanty men that are singing across the river there uh, for a do, but uh, just to tell you where I'm up to with the winch now. I've got both sides off. This motor turns. Um, I want to take it out and have a good look at it. I know I've got 12 volts coming out of the uh, out of the supply, so I think the fault is going to be in the motor. But I'm going to take it apart and just make sure the brushes are touching. And if not, it's 200 pounds for a replacement motor to go in this windlass. Um, not an expense I really wanted at the moment, but uh, something I may have to just spend money on. I'm just listening to the shantyman to just make me feel happy about it. So finally, I think I fixed it. I pulled this out, I've had the motor apart, there was a dry uh, joint inside the motor which I've re-soldered, the soldering iron is just there, and I found a break in the wire as well. I've got a lot of jobs to finish up here but it's getting dark I'm gonna put this back together now uh, but I think I've fixed the winch. It's very very late at night but it works. You're not gonna believe this it's 10 o'clock at night and I finally got my windlass back together. Did I need to take the motor out? I had the motor completely apart and although I found a dry wire, actually the biggest problem was probably from the manufacturer. They would literally spliced two wires together underneath and they'd fallen apart. Um, if only I checked that first, I would have saved hours of heartache because the biggest problem I had was to get that motor back in because you've got to keep pulling those cables underneath as the motor slides back into the windlass. I've had the motor completely apart. The brushes were fine. The motor was fine. I've put it back together. I've resoldered some joints in it anyway, so maybe it was worth it. But trying to bend my arm in a tiny little hole in the front to try and pull the wires back through took me four hours to put three allen bolts back in so that is probably the longest job i think i've ever had on this boat for a single job that's just frustrated me and frustrated me and frustrated me and bear in mind i started repairing that windlass some weeks ago um i tested it all the way through and I got to the point where the solenoid was delivering 12 volts and I tested that again today 
and uh, it was still good so I knew the problem was between the solenoid and the motor and I went straight for the motor it looked like a single cable run between the solenoid and the motor it wasn't so there's a lesson to be learned there and I've known this all my life as a technician and um, to just trace the problem through to the end and I left one crucial stage out one meter of cable between the motor and the solenoid it's working it's done and uh, I know the boat a little bit better than I did a few weeks ago that's for sure take care we'll see you soon more upgrades on the way and plenty more things to fix see you